Music is a huge part of our society. It brings people together, lets you express yourself in new and creative ways, can even help you get through tough times. Personally, for me, I don't get it. I'm sorry, I've honestly never been a big music person. I know, throw me into a volcano. I would just rather watch YouTube videos. I don't know, I like the constant flashing colors and pictures, I think. Like, I don't hate music. For the most part, I could honestly listen to anything, but that's kinda it, you know? Nothing stands out to me and I don't go out of my way to listen to it. If anyone out there is like me, you understand the pain of when a conversation starts turning towards the topic of music. You know exactly what's coming and you're helpless to stop it. There's nothing you can do. It's already in motion. The person you're talking to opens their mouth and you wince as they say it. So what kind of music do you listen to? Ah! Oh, I don't, I don't really listen to music. Like, not at all. Ah! Nah, maybe like some video game music every once in a while, but that's kind of it. Damn, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And after that conversational stumbling, the person starts talking about the music they like, and you have to stand there and take it. Oh, that sounds cool. I should give it a listen. You're just lying through your teeth, not being convinced in the slightest, and will immediately forget every piece of information they tried to feed you. Even if I wanted to look it up later, my brain goes, get this out of here immediately. We've got to make room for the four hour long video essay about Freddy Fazbear. Basically, I don't connect to music the way the majority of people do, and no one, including me, is happy about it. Look, I've tried to contribute in my own way, but no one else listens to the Mario Kart Cheeseland theme in their free time. It's good, no one believes me. Now on a completely unrelated note, a while ago I wanted to get into a hobby that was fun and active at the same time because I do not move if not incentivized to and that's not good. I'd like to still be fully functional at the age of 30. So after a bit of soul searching and digging around in the old ideas jar, I decided to try out DDR. I got a dance pad, downloaded some fun video game songs and anime intros to Dance Dance Revolution 2, and I got really into it. It was the most active I've been since high school. I was doing cardio for hours on end. Who am I? After playing my batch of custom songs for a few months, I decided to download some more stuff. And that's when I casually thought to myself, I wonder if there's any good Vocaloid charts. Now to start a completely new tangent again, Vocaloid is a voice synthesizer program, right? yada yada yada. Basically, it's robot voices you can control to write songs, and there's different characters based on what voice you use. The most common example, you know her, you love her, is Hatsune Miku. Yep, strap in folks, we're finally talking about Hatsune Miku, my beloved. My history with Hatsune Miku is a bit all over the place. I first got really into her in high school. I don't remember exactly how, but I probably just stumbled onto some of her popular songs while browsing YouTube one day. Either way, I was obsessed, and that was the first instance of me actually listening to music, which as you know, was groundbreaking. I loved Hatsune Miku so much that in my senior year of English class, the teacher told us to write a PowerPoint presentation about anything we wanted. Most kids talked about like ending racism or recycling or something like that, but I decided my presentation was gonna be about our girl, Hatsune Miku. You know, just as morally important as ending racism and preventing global warming. Of course, I disguised it as a presentation about our hologram concerts gonna be the future of live music, but it was really just an excuse to gush about Miku because I desperately needed that outlet. I was a lonely child. Honestly, I'm not even sure how I mustered up the courage to do that presentation in the first place because as the shy art girl who never talked to or hung out with anyone, it was a bold choice for me to talk about something considered so strange and nerdy at the time. I started my presentation and immediately was like, oh my god, what the hell am I doing talking about a holographic Japanese pop icon in front of my normie as classmates? I regret every moment I didn't stop myself from getting right here. After playing Miku's viral World Is Mine performance for the class, one of the like popular girls was like, that was cool, can we watch another? And I thought she was making fun of me, so I just sat back down. As much as I loved Miku back then, my anxiety got the better of me, and I slowly drifted away from her because I didn't want to feel like a social outcast. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world when you're a teenager, and you know it. We were all just trying to survive out there. I'm sorry, Miku, I was weak. Fast forward to current Jaden. I've grown up a bit and more sure of myself, learned some life lessons. I'm not surrounded by self-conscious teenagers 24-7. I'm now sitting here in front of my computer screen with a choice. 
Should I choose to yet again repress myself from pursuing a niche and uncommon interest because of self-conscious fears? Or am I gonna choose self-healing and growth and allow myself to fully re-explore the world of a Japanese virtual pop star to play DDR2? Crank up that, Miku. I started downloading songs I listened to years ago, found some new ones, I was exploring and already getting more and more into the music I chose to leave behind out of fear years ago. I was flourishing. And that's how it began. I didn't know it back then, but this was the first step of a hyperfixation like no other I've experienced. Hatsune Miku was showing me the ways of truly enjoying music. I was playing her whenever I was in the car, consistently looking up new songs and artists to add to my playlist, even listening to her while I work or play video games, which I pretty much never did. My world was changing and it was all hers. This wasn't just the music either, it was straight up about Hatsune Miku. I've never been a figure collector, but I started buying so many Miku figures I had to get a custom shelf in my office just to display them all. Dude, it's such a double-edged sword to be into Miku because the fan base is constantly being fed. New Miku this, new Miku that, gorgeous figures are coming out like every month. What am I supposed to do? Not buy them? Every house needs to have at least one Miku. That's a feng shui rule. Also, a huge oversight on my part, when I got my Miku shelf installed, I wanted it above my computer. It turned out great and displays them really well, but when I'm actually sitting at my desk and want to look up and admire my figures, all I see is accidental upskirt shots and I feel so bad. I'm sorry, Miku, I'm not trying to disrespect you, I promise. It was a miscalculation on my part. So whenever I'm at my desk, I just don't look up. As most of you probably know, Pokemon invited Jacob and me to Japan to attend the Pokemon World Championships back in August. That was super fun and the video of that trip should be up by now if I'd planned things correctly. If not, then oops. But Worlds also just so happened to overlap with Magical Mirai, also known as one of the biggest Hatsune Miku expos and concerts ever. <gasps> We had to go. Since getting super into Miku, it became one of my biggest dreams to see her live in concert. Who knows if we'd ever get this perfect of an opportunity again. What if she invites me backstage and we became friends? I immediately tried to get tickets but couldn't figure out how the Japanese ticket system worked, so Emily ended up having to help me out. She was also the one who told me about the concert in the first place, so thank you Emily, my hero, my savior. We got tickets. But not actually, because if you don't know, the way Japan does most of their online ticket systems is through a gotcha. Yeah, random lottery. No matter how much money I was willing to hypothetically spend to get these tickets, at the end of the day, we were all just like those little numbered balls in that bingo spinner thing. Months pass as I eagerly await our fate. Then the email pops up in my inbox. I click it, scanning it way too quickly to understand any of the contents until my eyes catch it. Successfully obtained tickets. We're gonna see Miku! Suddenly life had color again. This is what living feels like. Air tasted more pure. The sun was smiling, beaming even. I smiled back for the first time. Something smelled like toast. You have no idea how excited I was. I don't even understand why I love Hatsune Miku as much as I do, but she has become one of the pillars of my being. Let's jump to the day of the concert. Jacob and I are in Japan and are just about to arrive at the convention center. I remember looking out the window of the taxi, getting so excited to see people wearing their Miku shirts and kimonos, and they had Miku bags. I felt like I was finally around my people. We get there, walk into the convention center, and a blast of Hatsune Miku hits us. Giant Miku statues and posters, booths stocked with Miku merchandise, almost everyone dressed head to toe in Miku clothes. I saw people with Hatsune Miku suitcases to hold all the Miku things they were buying. I immediately wanted to run around and look at everything all at once. There were multiple times where Jacob lost me because I just started walking off in different directions like a Miku moth. We spent a few hours looking around and buying things. We spent a lot of money, but eventually we started getting ready for the live concert. I was giddy with excitement at this point. She was gonna be right in front of me. We found our seats and dude, we were pretty damn close to the stage, especially for randomly selected seats. I couldn't believe how close we were gonna be to Hatsune Miku. I already knew going into it, I was gonna cry frame one. If you didn't know, it's pretty standard to have 
special Miku glow sticks you can shake to the beat of whichever song is playing. You can even switch them to the coordinated color of whichever Vocaloid was on stage at the time. I've only learned about it from watching videos of concerts on YouTube thus far, and I gotta say, it was so fun to see people before the show warming up their arms and practicing their glow stick moves. They really take Hatsune Miku seriously, and I respect it so much. Some people were even quadruple wielding glow sticks. The record I personally saw was six, like some sort of Miku Wolverine. It was a huge bummer though, because Jacob and I tried to buy some sticks of our own at the expo hall, but they were already sold out, so we didn't have any and it was kind of embarrassing. Soon enough, the Miku songs the venue was playing started getting louder, and the house lights dimmed, and man, seeing the lights turn down and the teal glow of all the sticks emanating together to light up the room, honestly, it, it made me tear up. I don't even think I realized how much I loved Hatsune Miku until that moment, being completely surrounded by people who love her just as much and more than I do. This is what it's like to be into music, isn't it? To experience these moments being completely engulfed in a community, all connected by a single art. I get it now. It's beautiful. The room glowed Miku blue and everyone was cheering and shaking their glow sticks, anticipating her appearance. All the Vocaloids were introduced one by one with text on the hologram screen. Mako, Luka, Kaito, Kagamina Rin and Lan, and then... Hatsune Miku. The crowd went ballistic. I could already feel myself holding back tears. A little digital poof explosion goes off, and there she was right in front of us. She started singing and Jacob and I were cheering and bouncing with the rest of the crowd. By the time she got a couple songs in, Jacob and I were definitely feeling left out for not having the glow sticks to shake. So we pulled out our Miku plushes to use in place of them and that felt much better. By the end of the concert, Jacob was even dual wielding Mikus. After a few songs, Miku disappeared and the other Vocaloids played some of their songs. I honestly don't know them as well, so I wasn't too familiar with most of the songs they all played, but I was having a great time nonetheless. It was nice to not be fighting tears the whole time anymore as well. Then Miku came back and I- The concert continued on and we learned some real nice glow stick moves, replaced with our Miku plushes of course. There's the classic arm cheer on beat, the on beat off beat, the building cheer on to beat, even throw in the advanced building cheer on to double beat with a height. I'll say it, doing all those glow stick movements was honestly a really crazy arm workout. Like, we were working biceps and shoulders for two hours straight. Imagine Beat Saber, but higher up in the posture with almost no breaks. And if you don't commit, then Hatsune Miku thinks you hate her. I wanted to mention that in Vocaloid concerts, obviously they have a recording of the vocals because you know, but all the other instruments were absolutely real. There was a live band playing all the songs for the entire set. In the middle of the concert, there was even a nice little appreciation moment showcasing all the band members by name, accompanied by a little solo they got to play. I'm a big bass fan and would love to learn how to play it one day, and I know bass players get super neglected because everyone wants to watch the cool guitar players, so I gave extra attention to the Miku bass player. They definitely noticed me cheering for them, probably because I could tell everyone was watching the guitar players and I was the only one actually looking at them. And the bass player smiled super wide and raised his bass to me. And I just thought that was a nice moment. Appreciate your bass players, guys. They need it. Anyway, the concert went on. There were awesome lasers and sparklers, fun costume changes from all the Vocaloids, great set list. Shout out to the guy in front of us that was there with his girlfriend and definitely more excited to be there than she was. Finally, it came to the encore. We had to convince Miku to play one more song. You know how, at least in America, people are cheering and screaming for an encore? Well, Japan is like so quiet and polite, they were saying it like a suggestion. It was so quiet, kind of just a long session of applause with a whisper of Miku. Miku. Like, if I were Hatsune Miku, I would have questioned if they even wanted the encore in the first place. Also, we were asking for the encore for like five minutes straight. I was fully convinced she had left the building. But she came out for her last song. It was a blast. She was in her magical Mirai outfit for the year. And it was over. 
I've only gone to one other concert in my entire life, and it was because a friend in college had an extra ticket and invited me along. I didn't even know the band at the time, it was some random group called Fallout Boy or something, but I could have been to a thousand concerts and still say this was the best one I've ever been to. I loved the energy, I loved how passionate and excited everyone was to be there, and I loved Hatsune Miku, and still do. I want to go to so many more of her concerts, it was a great event for me, and I want to relive it again and again. You might think it's weird, or you don't get it. It's just a hologram robot girl, right? That's totally fine. If you can't find it in Vocaloid, I hope everyone has the opportunity to connect with or find a community to enjoy like I have with Hatsune Miku, because moments like that concert are so incredible and I feel so lucky to have been there. I just want everyone to experience something like that in their lifetime.